Hello everyone, welcome to Anachronox. Every once in a while I like to take a look at old and strange games and this one certainly fits the bill. It came out in 2001, it was developed by Ionstorm, who around the same time also created and released Daikatana and Deus Ex. And it's been described as being in the, at least I've heard it described as being in the same vein as Chrono Trigger and the Final Fantasy series. I can't actually confirm that because I've never actually played those games myself, but that sounds about right to me. It's sort of like an action-adventure game with an RPG system. So at the moment I'm about two hours into it, and my overall impressions are it's really tedious. It's, it's basically fetch quest the game so far. It is a very long game, keep in mind, so chances are it's going to change up somewhat. But two hours is a heck of a lot of time to invest in a game for it to not be really interesting um, much at all. Which is unfortunate. But there is some interesting things going on. And if there weren't interesting things going on, then I wouldn't be here to tell you about it. So it does have a really wacky sense of humor. That's one of the things I like about it. And it's got some very strange things going on. Some really, really strange things. Let me show you some examples, actually. This game has the creepiest character mouths I have ever seen. You're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about, so let me demonstrate. Observe. The key to my cellar's missing. Oh, uh, yeah? Where's the job part come in? When you find it, and I pay you. Man, I need a real case. I need a challenge worthy of my deductive and pugilistic skills. But I've got a bouncer. I also had a really fun glitch during the tutorial for the combat. It was very strange. I ended up actually being kind of teleported outside of the world and infinitely falling. So, watch that too. It's interesting. Yeah, some very strange stuff. All right, so let me show you a slice of the gameplay. Let me just play the game for a little bit. So let me catch you up on what's going on in the quest. What I have to do. I suppose I should explain. So basically I'm a... I believe I'm a detective. Yeah. I'm a detective guy that's kind of down on his luck. I don't have any money and basically I just need to take on cases and do stuff for money. So at the moment, my current case is to help this guy. This old... Grumpy wizard, basically. And if you don't believe me that he's grumpy, well, let me demonstrate. His name is actually... As it says in the bottom... Down, uh, up here. Grumpus. His name is actually Grumpus. He's very, very grumpy. I'm trying to help him recover something from the Mistech sewers. However, that's uh, where the whole fetch quest sort of part comes in, because actually getting into the sewers is... It, it just involves a lot of running back and forth, so here's where I'm at. Okay. We need to get into the Mistech tunnels. Yeah, sorry, not the sewers, the Mistech tunnels. Uh, however, there's some sort of a strange being, a uh, door lord, a mephodin, whatever door lord, guarding the entrance. So I need to find an alternative entrance. To do that involves this. This is what I've been... This quest line is what I've been going down. So Eddie knows how to get into the Mistech tunnels. So I need to find Eddie. I found Eddie, kind of. It turns out he lives in the junkyard. However, apparently I need an offering in order to actually see him. He wants something stinky and chewy. No, I'm not kidding. He wants something stinky and chewy, so I, I actually have to offer him something like that. And I also discovered that there's a limping guy in the tunnels near the fountain spiral with a very stinky sock that apparently has been filled up with pus. Hell, it might even be chewy, as it says. I'm not even kidding. That's what I mean about this game having a very strange sense of humor and being very strange. I'm going to find somebody's pus-filled sock as an offering to the being called Eddie in the junkyard so that he can hopefully, eventually, help me get into the Mistech Tunnels. That's right. Very strange. So let's just try to do that and show you things along the way. Hopefully we'll get into some combat. If I don't during this quest, then I'll just, you know, end up cutting and just finding an area that actually does have combat. Let's show you what's going on. So I need to go to the Fountain Spiral. I need to find the limping guy in the tunnels near the Fountain Spiral. Let's find him. Warning. Warning. Transition major of plate section C, D. So I believe... I should probably look at the signs, huh? Yeah, okay. As this is a beer fountain spiral. 
So, should be somewhere in this direction. You end up having to travel very far, and it's a fairly large game world. And that's where one of the problems with the sort of... The nature of most of the quests, where you have to just go between people, you know, bring this object, or find this person, talk to that person, now find this person, going between and between and between. In a fairly large game world, the problem with that ends up being that it just takes a long time to get anywhere. By the way, this if you're wondering what this being is, it's a... I think it's called a time... Uh, what is it? A time minder? Time mender? It's got a strange name. But you actually use them to save your game. So you save your game by... I guess... Petting this strange being with an exposed colorful, rainbowish brain that also has wings. Because why not? That's kind of the attitude of a lot of the game, to be honest, is just kind of like, why not? Just like random aliens, which is... It's silly, but it's also kind of part of the charm. Anyway, back to what I was saying about navigation in this game. You end up having to travel very far, and it's very tedious. Here's why. Look at this. So I just came from this elevator, right? There's a save point. Go around the corner, and then there's another elevator. And every single time you have to go through this cutscene. And I can't skip it. Escape, backspace, space, click, nothing. You can't skip it. So when you end up talking to all these people, you just end up just running and then waiting for a cutscene and then running and then waiting for a cutscene and then running and then here's a cutscene. It ends up being really tedious, which is very unfortunate. Yes, we're kind of walking on the walls there. Show you some of the NPCs along the way. The NPCs always have something interesting to say, which is one of the good things about this game. It's part of the wacky humor. It's everybody you talk to. It's kind of like poking at a box and watching something fun pop out. Vertigo. Here. Now. So dizzy. Must breathe deep. I tried to walk up the sloped green uh, grav path that leads to Casinox, just around this corner, but as soon as I felt myself walking up the wall, I panicked and kicked off. The relative gravity system is madness. When I look up and see people walking on the ceilings, it just breaks my mind. It reminds me too much of... of Madeline. What? Who the hell's Madeline? The key is to stay on the same plane. I wonder if that's a reference to a game or something. But uh, yeah, there's... Grav paths that kind of stick you to the wall, so you end up with uh, people walking on the ceiling and stuff. It's very strange. Okay, guy walking around the fountain spiral. I wonder if it's you. Hmm. The NPC names, by the way, are brilliant. They're <laughs> the weirdest names ever. Nick Plum. That's not one of the super weird ones, but you'll see some more, trust me. I'm supposed to be going up to my girlfriend's house. But if I wait ten more minutes, Anachronox will rearrange itself, placing her closer to me so I don't have to travel as far. Oh, efficient. I like that. You gotta be smart and think ahead when traveling on Anachronox. It's just hard giving directions. It's funny. Because it actually is kind of hard to navigate, which is part of the annoyance. I don't suppose you have a limp? See, look at this, look at this NPC name. Fiefer Wilcox. Look around you. These buildings and architecture were already here when Anachronox was discovered 80-odd years ago. Just imagine finding an entire city planet the size of a moon, and nobody's home. When it became clear the original population wasn't coming back, people moved right in. Mostly fugitives on the run. Yup. <laughs> and that's how the conversation ends. Yup. And look at this. Look at this cute little bot. It's Flingbot. I'll fling your trench coat for a buck. That's right. I'll fling anything for a buck. Doesn't matter the shape or size. I'll fling it right over the rail. For a buck. I'll fling myself down there for a buck. Uh, I think it's illegal to throw things down the fountain, dude. Are you serious? I actually had never done that before. I didn't know that was going to happen. I had talked to Flingbot, but I never got to the end of his conversation. 
He was my friend. I'm sorry, FIFA Wilcox. Your friend Flingbot got too flingy. So yeah, this game has a good sense of humor. I'm actually not sure if I'm going to the right area. Do you have a limp? Here's another brilliant NPC name. Faz Burbleman. I'm going to name my child that, if I ever have one. Faz Burbleman. I'm just, uh, waiting for my wife. Okay. Not suspicious at all. Right. So there's a limping guy in the tunnels near Fountain Spiral. In the tunnels. Alright, where's the tunnels? Mystic Museum, Rowdy's Zordos. Where the hell are the tunnels? That's the fountain. Are these the tunnels? I don't know. Navigation's really hard. I'm looking for a limping dude. These are tunnels. I don't know if these are the tunnels. Literally speaking, they are tunnels. But, uh, you know. Oh, 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 oh. That's gotta be him. Look at that. That is a limp. Excuse me, sir. Can I please have your pus-filled sock? Hi. <laughs> can we pull you aside for a second? Hi. <laughs> hey, can we pull you aside for a second? Hi. Hi? <laughs> Hi there. Hi! Yeah, this is gonna sound funny. Peculiar, really. But we heard... Uh, through the grapevine. ...that you had an unusual... A condition. ...accident that left you... Unusual. ...with one leg. And we were wondering if... Uh, By any chance... ...you might give us... Loan us! Loan us, yeah. Your, uh, sock. Sock. Your sock. Oh my god. Like I said, interesting sense of humor. Sometimes very stupid, sometimes juvenile. But interesting nonetheless. Is that ship about to explode or something? That doesn't look good. Oh no, that's just what it normally looks like. It just normally looks like it's on fire. Huh. This here, by the way, this is Fatima, who is my... What she called? My life cursor or something like that? She's basically my, my AI assistant. Uh, take the stinky sock to Eddie in the junkyard. Okay. Let's go. Now I just need to find the junkyard. So this is what a lot of the game is, this is what most of the game has been for the first two hours of it, is just trying to freaking find anything. And then going through those agonizing cutscenes, going up and down things. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, this way. Thankfully you run pretty fast, but still, oh my god. I'm not sure if I go up or this way. So this is where a lot of the tedium comes in. And there's been some particularly uninspired quests as well. This is probably the way to go. Probably? I'm hoping so. There's been some particularly uninspired quests as well. For example, I had a, uh, a sort of follow mission. It's one of those ones where you're supposed to say, stay a certain distance behind somebody. If you're too close, they know you're there and they run away, and if you're too far away, you lose them. That sort of a thing. You know, very typical, but... It's just stuff like that that's just not really interesting. It's stuff like that that sounds more interesting in theory than in actual practice, you know. You're a detective, you know. The detective tailed the man to find the other man. Sounds kind of cool, tailing somebody. But in practice, in a game, it's not fun. At least not when it's executed like this. In the typical way of, you gotta stay a certain distance or the entire mission is ruined and you have to start over again. Which I did once, and that was horrible. Okay, junkyard areas, this way. So you just end up running around a lot and it's not a hell of a lot of fun. Unfortunately. I also should mention the sound design. Uh, the music is okay. But the sound design of just the world in general is actually really surprisingly poor. Because, like, I mean, look at this. I'm in a... I'm in a big sort of... I don't know if you call this a shopping district. But this is like a hub of activity, right? There's quite a few people here. There's stores and many, many shops. And things like that. you think this place would feel uh, alive and bustling with life or something, right? But... 
There's no sound at all. There's no sound of, like, crowd chatter. Or... Anything. I mean, most of the game world honestly feels dead. It's just the music that's playing in the background, and then the footsteps. And then the occasional sound from, like, the elevator going up and down, and that's it. There's, like, nothing else. This, face, this place just feels completely dead. Where's the junkyard? Oh, here it is. There's just very little sound. Warning. Warning. Transition, Transition minor, minor plate, plate sections, sections 32, 32 33, 33, 11, 11 and, 6 and 6 will commence, will commence in 15. Oh, here we go. Okay, this might be some combat if this guy decides to fight me. And judging by the fact that there's a save here, I think he might. You see, I can tell he's a bad guy because he's got spikes on his shoulders and he's, uh, patting a club against his fist. Let's see if he wants to... Oh, yep, he wants to fight me. Okay, I can show you the combat system. Kind of, although it's going to be hard to explain. Here, why don't you, uh, punch him? Or something. Do something. You idiot. What? What the fuck? I don't know what's happening. I've never used him for fighting before. Here, I'll use you, because I know how to use you. Shoot him. I've actually never fought with this old guy in my party before. Beat attack. Okay. Oh, I need to, be I need to move closer to him. That's why. Well, he just got blown up. Alright, old guy, move closer so you can beat his ass. Okay, this red ring is how much until how long until I can actually attack. So, with boots, let's shoot him in the face. Cool, old guy's red ring is about to go. Oh, he's dead. Doesn't matter. Although I'm on fire, which is kind of uncomfortable. Yeah! Yay, XP, level 3. 28 bucks, a heel grease, and a bindle bag. Bindle bag, by the way, is... Whoa. <laughs> he just, like, teleported behind me. Bindle bag, by the way, is basically... Uh, explosive... Bag, really. I was gonna say grenade, but it's not really a grenade, it's just an explosive bag. And that's it! So far, in the first two hours, the combat has been very dull. And there's some other problems I have with it that I want to go over, but I didn't really have time there. We'll see if I get into more combat. Alright, let's find this Eddie and let's give him a stinky pus-filled sock. This does seem like a place that's filled with lots of undesirable... Dis ...disturbed people or whatever. That's not the right term. Um, It seems like a place that's filled with assholes, basically, so I should hopefully get into more combat. What is that? Pre-owned shield cell. Oh! I actually might be able to equip that, so let's open up the party screen. As you can see, you can actually have quite a large party. I'm assuming you can have all of those filled, which means you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members. Okay, equip best. Yep, pre-owned shield cell. There we go. You equipped it. Oh, God. Uh, hold on, I should probably... If I am going to fight them, I should heal myself. Let's... Use. Let's use a heal grease. Okay. Let's use another one. Alright, now I'm up to 300. Cool. Let's maybe go the other way. I don't know if I can fight three at the same time. Hi. His name is Tizophone. Eddie knows. Okay. Yeah, there's just like no sense of atmosphere in the sound design. It's really weird. I don't know if I've ever heard a game so devoid. Look! There isn't even any sound for going through the water. There's just barely any sound at all. I have to wonder if they even had a sound designer. I keep finding these things. Blah. Bugs are crawling on that thing. Yeah, just bug mounds. Okay, well, I do want to show combat, so let's go back. Let's actually save it, and then let's go visit those three people. So some of the biggest problems that I have with combat... 
is that although it's kind of turn-based, it's kind of also real-time in a way that's really annoying. And the interface for how you actually do your actions is surprisingly poor. Alright, there we go. So if I get my ass beat down here, I can just come back. So even though you have to wait, you have to wait for that red ring to complete. Uh, before you can actually do an action with that character. I'm gonna have to explain this a little bit before the fight, because then I don't really have time during the fight. No, yeah, maybe they'll beat each other to death. <laughs> Some interesting pathfinding from the guy in the back there. Yeah, so you have to wait for that red ring to complete. That's just your timer, right? And once it's all the way full, then you can actually do an action with that character. However, it's it's kind of real-time in that the enemy will do an action as soon as their bar completes. No matter what. So, it's kind of real-time. You have to wait for your character to actually be able to perform an action until you can actually do something. But the problem is, if you wait, the enemy will attack you. So it's not like you have as much time as you want to take an action. You have to do whatever you want to do extremely fast, or the enemy is going to take advantage of that and attack you while you're trying to make a decision. Which is really annoying. Because I think that takes away a lot from the tactics, because you can't just calmly consider all of your all of your tactics. You have to do something really fast. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of real-time. But at the same time, it has the kind of constraints of a sort of turn-based system. So it doesn't feel as fluid as, you know, normal real-time sort of combat system, but it also doesn't feel like it has all the tactics of a turn-based system, so it kind of seems like it's pretty much the worst of both worlds or something. It's just, it's not very pleasant. And here's what I mean about the controls. Let's get into combat. Alright, so I'm gonna attack with boots. Okay. Here's the shoot thing. See, I'm already getting attacked. Now, you'd think you would just press the shoot key, uh, press the shoot button, and then just click on whoever you want to shoot, right? No, no, no. You can't click on them. You have to mouse over the icon. Actually, I've got Grumps as selected. Um, hold on, I actually need to move with him, I think. Okay, so Grumps uh, has a melee attack. He can only attack this guy, because this is the only one he's close to, right? I'm going to keep getting beat here, what it, but whatever. So you think you'd select the melee attack, and then you click on the character to actually hit them. But no, you have to actually mouse over the icons until you find the one that you want, and then click on the icon. <laughs> that, that attack animation was awesome. And his stick did more damage than my weapon. I'm offended. But yeah, if you just wait here, like, I'll just get attacked. See, there. You need to do something or they'll just keep whacking on you. Well, he's not gonna like that explosion. Oh, it missed. Even though it exploded at his feet. Whatever. So, yeah, again. Here's a gun. Click on people? No. You gotta select their icons. It's really silly. So it forces you to make, it forces you to do things in real time and do them very fast or you're at a disadvantage because you're getting hit when you could have been actually attacking somebody. It forces you to do that, but it doesn't give you a good interface for which to actually do actions in a fast manner. These guys actually aren't that hard at all. Yeah, this is not even close to a problem. So this interface problem of not being able to intuitively and quickly just select who you want to do an action on wouldn't be as much of a problem. Um, if you weren't pressured for time, but you are. Please miss, please miss. Oh god, thank god. Alright. Shoot this guy in the face in a second. Yeah, these guys are so easy. Battle complete! Level 4. Don't actually know what that means, I'm assuming it just increases my health or something. 85 bucks, 3 heal greases, and a bindle bag. Cool. Now, I will say that this is actually the first time that I've actually been fighting with more than just myself. Now, I've actually got a party of two members to fight, instead of just me. And it's actually definitely more interesting than how the combat was before. So the combat is definitely more interesting with more people. 
but it took over two hours to actually get to this point, and I still don't really like the combat, but it is better. I will say that. Definitely more interesting, more tactical options with more than one person. Alright, so we're still looking for Eddie. Still the other way to go, but let's see what's back here. Unless this is where I came from? That is where I came from. I'm going the wrong way. Oh, even more. Oh, I think we might need to save somebody. Hello? Okay, I got this. Who's going to fight first? I'm going to be able to shoot first. Sure, let's shoot that person. Actually, I think the other person might be... Maybe he's going to attack us. I don't know why I moved him there. Oh god, I did not mean to. I'm sorry. You are going to get attacked by everybody, old man. But it's okay, you've got more health than me, so, um... Deal. Grumpus. Ouch. Yeah, we are not saving that person. Alright, let's focus on this guy until we can take him down. I think that probably should kill him. Yes, okay. I mean, it's just ridiculous that I can't click on the person I want to attack. I have to click on the icon. Gotta cycle through them and just look for which one is the correct one. It's really silly. I mean, I've got a mouse cursor. Use it. Utilize it. Dear God, please. It's not like this game came out on consoles and it's made for a console or something like that. It only came out on PC. Oh, line of sight. Line of sight is blocked. Let's move. Same, same with movement. You can't just click on the ground. You have to click on an icon. And we win. I think he went down. Yeah! 70 bucks, a middle bag, and a Brublin Bugo Gems. I'm assuming those are simply worth money. Alright, I should probably heal up our party too, we're pretty hurt. Or at least he is. I think. Oh yeah, he's very, very hurt. Okay, that's fine. That should be enough. Oh, Eddie! I wonder if I'm actually going to Eddie or if I'm just kind of going into the random encounters bonus area. Because there's an awful lot of combat here. Alright, let's uh, show you throwing a bindle bag. As long as it actually hits, I think it'll kill him in one hit. Kablamo! Yeah, 200 damage. Goodbye. I, I don't know why I just moved. I should have just actually hit him. Okay, I get to punch this guy in the face, and then I should win. Oh, you got an attack off first. I love how he's just on fire. And he doesn't even care. 53 bucks, two heal greases, and another middle bag. Okay, well, I'm happy I actually got to show off the combat. Yeah, I'm actually warming up to the combat. It's not... It's definitely not good. I don't like it. But it's actually okay. Before, I thought it was really bad. Now it's actually okay. But it just... It's a shame that it takes two hours to actually get to the point where you have enough members to have an interesting encounter. Because before, when it was just you... The encounters were not interesting at all. They sucked. It is very repetitive, though. These are exactly the same enemies. Let's throw that the little guy. 
Which is kind of dumb, because he's so far in the back, he's just the last one I should attack, because he only has melee attacks, but whatever. Haha, <laughs> you blew up. Okay, who's going next? Looks like Boots is going to go next. And you missed. Good job. Should take this guy. Wait, is this the one I shot last time, or is it the other one? I think I maybe just divided up my damage. I did. Which is dumb. Don't do that. Alright, let's kill this one. Thankfully, the Bindlebacks do 200 damage to the enemies, but only somewhere around 40 to us. Which is quite nice. Level 5. 65 bucks, more heal grease, and some more Bindlebags. Let's go ahead and heal ourselves up. You need the most. What the heck is that? Seems interesting. Indeed. Can I get to it? I don't believe this game has a jump, by the way. In case you're wondering. Ew, a pet's covered in, like, blood stains. I'm probably going totally the wrong way. Eddie. Yeah, more and more encounters. Huh. I almost want to go back. Alright, let's punch him up. Oh, there's a person up there. Okay, this could be the right way. Oh, they do have ranged attacks. Never mind. Let's see how much health they have. 79. Does that kill him? It does. Okay, cool. <laughs> Your bubbles are no match for my beard. Get closer so I can punch that guy. Let's shoot the other one. So I think they pretty much die in one hit. Ow. More arms. More punches. Hello there, what is up with your face? Oh my god. This game has the strangest faces for the NPCs. Let me guess, you have an even stranger name. Moop. Hello, Moop. Offering. Very nice, very nice. Only one may enter. Maintain distance. Make not sudden movements. Suspicious anything, and we split you from your life. Understand? Sure. Oh, god. That's not the way to go. Okay, I'm guessing I am going the right way then. Nick. <laughs> his name is Nick Deedle. Nick Deedle is his name. Oh my god, that is brilliant. Dick Needle. No, I'm sorry. Nick Deedle, rather. You'll never believe the offering. I brought Eddie. Are you sitting down? You're not going to believe this. Okay, tell me more. Ready? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm ready. It's a piece of string. Look at the way the tiny fibers intertwine. Look how taut and strong it is. What's chewy about that? Are you kidding? I'm not falling for that. You just want to steal a gnaw or two off my string. I know your type. Uh... Go get your own string. 
Right. Better save first, just in case something horrible happens. Flooch is his name. You see that guy's piece of string? Wow. The guy with the piece of string should wrestle the guy who brought floss. Says, Mub. Someone brought floss? What the hell? I'm still waiting for a number. Did you get a number? No, VIP access, yeah. Bennett, that is a depressingly banal name. I'm here for Eddie, man. I'm here for the signs he gives. He writes them in the sand, man. Of your mind. You know, like his brain. He's got a hotline to the truth, man. See, Eddie's got, like, the potboiled, man. He's got the card slipped. It's all in his head, man. All in his head. Trust me. Eddie knows, man. He knows. All right, man. Ooh, what is that? Is that a gun? Three beam. Hold on, can I equip that? Yes, it is better than what I had before. How much better, though? I, I don't actually know where it is. Oh, here we go. Uh, the only thing that changes is in the bottom right. My weapon goes from... Down arrow red to poor. Huh? Well, poor fills the bar better than down arrow red, so... Sure. Let's go speak with Eddie. <laughs> Me and my stinky sock. See, there's like no freaking sound design. There's like no sound. It's weird. The door didn't even make a noise. Nash them snappers, kid. I got a sock that eats like a meal. Outstanding. Most excellent. This putrid, unwashed, pus-soaked, blood-crusty sock was fermenting around a gangrenous stump of a foot for eight and a half months. This is the chewiest, smelliest sock you'll ever have the luck to nosh on. And you're just a short Q&A away from sucking this baby dry. <clears throat> Sir, we're all impressed by the sock, but there are rules here. Procedures. Wait your turn! Hey, behind the yellow line! You hear me? Get your butt back there. You can't just barge in without a number, sir. You have to wait outside. No! Let him ask. Let him ask. I'm trying to sneak into the Mistech tunnels, but someone's bolted a methadine door lord to the entrance. Happen to know an easy way around him? You must give Eddie the sock before he will answer. What? Forget it then. Eddie's mind is overpopulated with information. Chewing helps him focus. It allows him to sort through the overwhelming data in his brain and pinpoint specific strands of thought. It's the only way he can concentrate. Sounds like a scam to me. Thanks anyway. Batima. What did you say? Batima. Who's Fatima? How do you know about Fatima? Much pain. Much pain. Eddie's gift is strong. <laughs> Doylard has secret. About brother. Very secret. Incriminating. You found dirt on his brother, huh? So you suggest blackmailing my way into the caves? Mm, blackmail, unnecessary secret, unnecessary knowledge of brother is enough. Well, I no. guess, if you say so. Trust in Eddie will not misguide you. Okay, people, okay. Can we wrap this up, please? Eddie's got a lot of subjects left to see today, and we're way behind schedule. Hey, quit pushing, punky. I'm history. Thanks for the help, Eddie. Don't go change it. No respect for pageantry. Next!
Eddie says to ask the guard about, you know, okay. Simply knowing that his brother has a secret is apparently enough. So yeah, this game is batshit insane. And often very disgusting, such as chewing a pus-filled sock. Oh my god. That is an extreme biological hazard. That is... Seriously. If I think any more about that, I think I might actually throw up. Oh. Okay, well that shows a pretty good cross-section of the game, I think. The, uh, the absurd NPC names and faces and the wacky sense of humor and the combat. And how often you often have to travel. From person to person to complete these quests. There's many steps, lots of in-between things. Talk to this guy, then talk to this guy, then talk to this person, then find this person. It's kind of mind-numbing. So again, overall impressions of the game. Um, it's really lacking in a lot of ways. It's just, the biggest problem is that it's, to me, is that it's very tedious. There's just so much running around and waiting for these really slow cutscenes to finish as you're traveling around. And a lot of the stuff you're doing is just not particularly interesting and the combat is not very fun to me. However, my opinion on the combat has changed a little bit. Before I thought it was quite bad, now I just think it's, eh, it's okay. It's more interesting now that there's more party members, definitely. But it did take a couple hours for that to actually happen. I mean, really, if it takes a couple hours for your game to actually start being kind of fun, there's something wrong. But I do like its sense of humor. As disgusting as it can be sometimes, as that cutscene showed. It is wacky. It's kind of charming. I mean, the design they went with for the aliens is kind of like throw everything at the wall and just see what the hell sticks. It doesn't feel like it's a consistent world that you'd really want to know the lore about, if you even can learn the lore about all these different species and stuff like that. It just kind of feels like they just randomly threw stuff, which gives it a strange sort of charming feel to it. Like, the alien species just feel random. Like, there's a dude with one eye, there's a dude with a weird face, and he's called Moop. So, it's got a certain charm to it. There's something very, very strange about it. And as I mentioned, and as I'm sure you heard, the sound design is also very lacking. But again, what I like about it is how charming it is. How funny and kind of disgusting it is. It's very strange. I've certainly never played a game like it before. Alright, that has been a look at Anachronox. It's available from GOG.com, which is where I got my copy, so I'll have a link in the description where you can check that out. I'll also have a link in the description to the widescreen resolution patch that I'm running. So, thank you for watching.